And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 104. In this episode, we'll be breaking down the stories from the book Lives of Saints. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by our dark and gothy goddess, Lee Bardugo. Moi Savieni Caster. Hi, hello. Hi. <laughs> we got some listeners. We do. First, we have Fort Worth, Texas. Woo. Thank you, Thanks. Fort Worth. And next, Adroge, Argentina. Yay! Thank you. Yay. We love our listeners. So much. Are... So, yes, we've had a lot going on, <laughs> Grisha cast-wise. We've had a lot of episodes come out. We've had... Mm-hmm. It's been awesome. We've been busy. We sure have. So, how have you been? I've been pretty good, actually. Yeah? We've had a lot of rain, so we've been inside a lot. Yes. <laughs> I would rather be outside. But, um, yeah, it's been pretty good. It got a... I actually got an email saying I need to pick up my cap and gown for graduation. <gasps> Mazel so, tov. <laughs> so it's very exciting. Almost done with my bachelor's degree. That is incredible. 20 years later. <laughs> Girl, hey, that's awesome. At least I did it. Exactly. <laughs> I, oh my gosh, I could not go back to school. So you've got. Oh, it's so much easier now than it was when we were back in school. So yeah. you could. <laughs> well, you're right. I could, but I don't want to. Well, so. th- that's the important part. <laughs> exactly. So, well, that is awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. So when is, like, I mean, do you have a set date for your graduation? Um, I think it's the second Saturday in May. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, it's going to be warm then. Yes, it is. Mm. Yeah, but it'll be up on the plateau, so it won't be as warm. The plateau? The plateau, yeah. Oh, Okay. You do you not mean? know where the plateau is. What are you talking is? about? What plateau are you wow, talking about? Wow, the Cumberland Plateau. Oh, that's what you're talking about. <laughs> Still, I don't yes. know where that is. but hey. If you I've, keep going east mm-hmm. on 40, mm-hmm. it goes up and then it flattens out mm-hmm. like a plateau. And that's mm-hmm. called the Cumberland Plateau. Haven't Whenever we get the weather reports, don't you know like when it says they're going to get more snow on the plateau? I just have no clue where they're ever wow, talking okay. about. Yep. So, so Cookville, Crossville over there, that's the plateau. Oh, well, thank you. I've all... I just learned you something. You sure did. I just pay attention to where I am. I just look and see, like, okay. It's... You are the center of the universe, so oh, that's the uh... most important oh. part is wherever you are. Er, mm-hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, ma'am. I have had a crazy day, by the way. Oh. Work was insane Um, for me. I had... A very hard moment that was just, it was really crazy. Um, I just felt bad. It was hard. Um, working where I do, I have to sometimes see people get arrested. And right. That's, yeah. That's rough. I had, so I had um, a specific situation that had never happened ever before. Mm-hmm. And it was just loud and to the point where I actually had to leave the room because I was getting emotional. Really? Yeah. It was really bad. Like my first half of my day was horrible and then when I went to lunch I laid in my car trying to take a nap um and actually when I went back in I was fine but the first like beginning oh my god it was it was just really rough it was really hard um so anyways I'm glad that I get to end it with you yes it always makes it better (laughs) well you know working in a courthouse is is hard sometimes so you get to see, besides all the fun parts, yeah, um, but it's just, yeah, it was rough. I feel bad sometimes. I think that's what it is. I, um, everybody else is, I guess, used to it or something, um, but I still, like, have... You're sensitive. I am. Yes. And that, oh my gosh, pretty much I had someone looking into my eyes, and I watched their tear, tear ducts fill with water. And, um, yeah, that was hard because I was like, oh, my God. It was just anyways. Um, but, hey, I, 
I'm, I'm sure things will work out. And it was, it's hard for me. They're probably fine, to be honest. <laughs> so, but yeah. So. Oh, you're sweet and sensitive. I am. Yeah. We'll, we'll just say that. Yeah. It's but, the truth. Yeah. Well, since last podcast, we celebrated my dad's birthday. Yay! Which yeah. was really fun. It was awesome. And I worked hours and hours on an epoxy resin tray of an ocean for my dad. That was, it turned out great. However, it was not supposed to take that long. <laughs> and the easy part, which was the waves, um, I got everything else done so quickly and easily. And then the waves, which is just the supposed to be the easiest part that I watched on YouTube, literally, I would say, took about eight hours. And that is from mess up to then scraping everything and trying to keep everything okay. <laughs> and then starting over, I, um, yeah, Chris probably is not happy with how much epoxy I wasted. <laughs> but um, I finally got it. And, you know, the reason I got it is because I stopped listening to the people on YouTube, to be honest. Sometimes you got to do it your own way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So how are you and your arts and crafts? How is your, um, your glass going? It's going really well. Um, I wanted to build up a um, like an inventory and then kind of like put it on Etsy or something. And I can't even build up <laughs> an inventory before. Like I don't even finish a piece before somebody wants it and buys it, which is That's good. not a terrible <laughs> problem to have. It's a great problem to have. Um, but I can't like build up a store. So I just kind of have to like let that go. And... I had like half of a piece finished and somebody was like, I want that. So um, it's going really well. <laughs> that is good. Yes. And I enjoy it. I'm thinking about um, going to a like a uh, glass studio for my birthday to try blown glass. Yes. Because that, I, I'm, I don't. I don't think I've talked about it like really here, but like I'm obsessed with glass. I've always been obsessed with glass and I could talk about it forever and ever and ever. Um, but it's always scared me. Like I'm terrified of like getting cut. I'm terrified of like getting shards everywhere. And I've always been scared of it. And so one day I was finally like, I am going to do it because it scares me. Okay. Um, and so now I'm kind of getting the, the courage to keep going now that I'm like cutting glass and sanding glass. Now I'm like, I need to blow glass now. <laughs> so are you just like, are you buying the glass and then creating it are or are you creating the glass no you buy glass sheets okay okay um and then you cut them into shapes and then you foil them and then you solder them together and then you patina them so the pieces i've seen of yours that have like uh -huh. colors and like how like that's something you add to it correct are no. you no the glass comes that way okay so where do you buy glass like um, sheets of glass. <laughs> there are stores. Um, there's one um, on Old Hickory. Okay. Cl pretty close to me. Um, there And there's a really good store in, in uh, Chattanooga, which is two hours away. Yeah. Um, but I do a lot of it online. I buy a lot of them. Wow. Online, yeah. Well, I bet that shipping is kind of... The shipping? Yes. <laughs> it's a little crazy. And then you can get broken pieces, obviously, because yeah. shipping glass is difficult. So you just kind of have to be creative with those broken pieces and huh. put things together. And But but I'm obsessed. Like Yeah. Like when you start learning about glass, about how it's actually a living, like not living, but it's like a moving <laughs> thing. Like it's yeah. a... It, it moves. So like when you remove like an old stained glass from a church... Um, the bottom is going to be thicker than the top because it's constantly moving. Um, sometimes when you cut stained glass and you come back to it, that cut's gone because um, wow. it like heals itself. So what? it's just, yes, it's just a fascinating, really cool. That yeah. is. Yeah. That's crazy. So I'm, that's my, that's my newest obsession. <laughs> and I, I like the little tink it makes when you ooh. cut it. <laughs> oh, I want to yeah. hear this tink. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I love it. I, I actually have had fun with like using um, alcohol inks on glass yeah. and like, so I've actually really wanted to actually find like, where do I buy just a big piece of glass? But I, I guess... think Hobby Lobby has them too. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. They have like 12 by 12 sheets, I think. Well, 
Well, there you uh, go. New new project for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Chris would love that one. <laughs> so before we get started, real quickly, we do have a Feared and Mary Kill that Emily from Instagram sent us. Thanks, Emily. And it actually has to go with what we're doing, um, The Lives of Saints. Okay. So, And I haven't thought about this at all. I've just thrown it in there. So it is Feared and Mary Kill, Elizaveta, Gregory, and Juris. Gosh. I know. So See, that's a whole other thing because they're like saints and they're... So, <laughs> it's well, different than to think of them as like normal people. So just think about them from um, King of Scars. That's true. Um, and we do know a lot about Elisabetta. I so, Okay. Yeah. I think I know. Okay, go. I think. I think. I think. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to... Okay, because I have a What's tie between the two of them. So I'm going to kill Gregory. Yeah. Um, because he's weird. Like, that whole shifting Shape. thing. Mm-hmm. Like, uh-uh. That ain't happening. I don't want to walk down the hall and randomly see some, like, bear. I don't... No, thank you. With eight eyeballs? Yes. yes. Like, it's a <laughs> spider like, bear. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, But between Elisaveta and Juris, I think I'm going to Fjordan Elisaveta. Oh. Girl. Yeah. And Mary Juris. Because I feel like because Juris is, like, dragony and, like, yes. whatever, like, he'd be really protective. Uh huh. So yeah, we'll go with that. So I'm just gonna say like my absolute favorite out of all of them is Juris for sure. So like he's like top rank, and I'm the same thing. Like I, Gregory, I'm sorry, but Mm-mm. if I'm thinking, however, we haven't gotten to his story yet in Lives of Saints, so that is a whole other situation. So maybe we'll come back to this when we do that one <laughs> and see because the maybe Gre- that changes your mind. Well, because the Gregory that we think about from yeah. King of Scars. Very is that mutating like that spider just, bear? Yeah, it's that <laughs> weird. It's that part of the book when you get to it and you're like, "Huh, this is definitely yeah. taking a turn." Mm-hmm. Um, Elizabeth terrifies me. I yeah, compared to like because it was her story we did last week, right? Yes. Okay, like with the looker routers. Yeah, that story is actually. I think it's a really nice story, but mm-hmm. then the Elizaveta that you, you actually in the meet, book. Yeah, she I'm was, like, yeah, uh-uh. So I'm sorry, I don't buy that whole um, the lives of saints story. That's the myth of how. Yeah, no, Mm-mm. she wasn't that like. I'm sure she wasn't just like, oh my god, the bees. Because <laughs> look at her, like she's crazy. Well, but, she's had time to develop crazy. So. Yeah, she's been stuck in the fold with Gregory and Juris. <laughs> yeah. So anything that. Lord. Uh huh. So my fear to Mary kill is the exact same. Um, I would kill Gregory. Um, however, no, I don't want a fear to Elizaveta though. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna have to. Okay, I'm gonna do this just because I just. I'm gonna fear to Juris, and I'm gonna marry Elizaveta because. Just because you're married don't mean you have to have a great relationship. And, it, like, I mean, I know that's horrible to say. <laughs> but, I mean, I could just, like, you know. You don't have to fear it in your spouse. <laughs> no, I mean, it could just be, like, one of those, you know, just on paper things. True. A yeah. uh, marriage of convenience. Exactly. Just for this one instance in a game. <laughs> yes. Just so and I can. And then you're divorced. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Get those papers mm-hmm. ready. Well, that was cool. I hope you enjoyed our answer, <laughs> Emily. However, I did message her back and let her know that we were going to um, answer it on this podcast. She is a new listener, and she's at, like, episode 56 Ooh. or something. Like and I was like, okay, well, then you'll get to hear it when you get there. <laughs> so so hello from the future. <laughs> exactly. And this is for Emily Tosh on Instagram. So, Well, thank you, Emily. Who knows where we will be when you actually hear this, but... <laughs> Hey, coming live right now. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so we should get started. Okay. Because we got some stuff. And okay, so I we're starting off with Sanct Demian of the Rhyme. Okay, so let's get our books. Don't forget. I put a little bookmark in mine. Oh, well, mm. lottie da for you. Yeah. Okay, so. I just happened to open it up to it. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're just good like that. So, by the way, do you know what the word rhyme, R-I-M-E, means? No. 
Neither please, did I. Please tell us. Well, I can't remember it now, but it has <laughs> well, to. You still I, don't know. <laughs> no, I looked it up like right before you got here, and it is like the frost on a cold object. Like if you put like I'm I'm guessing like the only thing I can think of is like you know if you have like uh you put mugs in the fridge at restaurants mm-hmm. for like beer, and then if you take that out and then like pour the beer in it, like I mean like that frost that forms okay. on the outside. So huh. that is what the noun of a rhyme R I M E is. Okay, so this is a very interesting story. Um, this is just I love. Lives of Saints, this is where it starts to get interesting. So this one is, we're kind of in Fjorda, kind of, um, on the outskirts of it or somewhere. And there is this, like, little village, and it's got a cemetery, and it's got some trees that are growing around it. And as time goes by, these trees, I guess, get more fruitful and multi- Fruitful and multiply. I'm, like, preaching now. Um... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that really was. Okay, um, yeah, so they get bigger and to the point where the poor people that are trying to go visit their loved ones that are passed on cannot get to the cemetery. So they go to the owner who owns the land, which happens to be this man named Demian. Okay, so they're all like, okay, please like help us. And Demian's like, okay. So he tells... <laughs> By the way, I love this because he's not going to go do anything. He's like, he gets his servants to go and chop down the trees so they can have a nice little pathway that leads them to their cemetery. It works for a little bit. However, until a storm comes through and that storm creates a huge flood, which then messes up some of these tombstones and like, ugh. so here come the little townspeople. Demian, we mad. Our tombstones are all messed up. It's like, okay. So he actually goes out there this time, and he creates an aqu- Oh, God. I'm going to mess up a word. This is so dumb. This is a horrible. Aqueduct? Aqueduct, yeah. A- oh, good. Thanks. Okay. So he creates one, which I- It's very Roman of him. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, he creates this aqueduct, and it works. So then the water, like, just kind of- Goes into another place. I think it like goes to a field or something that helps. So they're like happy for a minute until they go. And now this aqueduct has like put shade on the cemetery. So the people are cold. Okay, that's a really like bad reason, I think. Like, I mean, <laughs> they do mention in there that a couple flowers died, but the main thing is like they were cold while going to visit the cemetery in the shade. Mm. Okay, so. Anyways, if they came to me and, like, were complaining about shade, I would just give them some shade. But, anyways. You would read them? I would read them to filth because that's a bad reason to go complain. Anyways, so they go to Demian again, and this time he's just like, okay, like, I've done everything. I don't know. Um, So he's, like, looking up at the aqueduct thing. He's looking up, and he's like, and he puts his hands on the ground. He's like, only if the saints could help me. And, you know, if the cemetery was just up higher, it wouldn't have to deal with any of this. Well, then all of a sudden, rumbling happens and boop, this cemetery shoots up onto a mountain. Yes, <laughs> literally. So. <laughs> like, so all the dead bodies and everything. Okay, well, hold on. We've got, um, we are going to tell mm-hmm. you what happens, how the, so the, only thing that got damaged was Demian's family crypt. Um, so, the people of the town, by the way, whose family members are fine, don't have a single chip on their like tombstone, decide to say, Demian, you have like ruined your family name because you've done this, and we think you're involved in dark magic. And we just don't, these people, I think, hold on, there's a, a sentence in here that I thought was, he can think, oh, no, that's not it. I know, I should have put it somewhere. <laughs> um, here we, okay. Maybe they did not know how to be satisfied. Th- ain't that some truth? Mm-hmm. Like, Sounds seriously. Like so these people who can't be satisfied because this man has gone out of his way to help 
and do everything for the cemetery and these people decide that um so one person picks up a piece of marble that's from the family crypt that demians that yeah and throw it at him well all the others decide to and they stone him to death boom i mean yeah so um (laughs) yeah driven mad by getting what they wanted the others followed, hurling stones at the nobleman until he lay crumbled beneath the ruins of his own family crypt. Okay, so... <laughs> That's a great way to say thank you for getting rid of Isn't our shade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and just the, like, it's, icing on the cake is that they use, like, the marble from the family. family. Like, and to come up with the reason, too, like, you've dishonored your family. Hey, you ain't part of my family. How do you know I dishonor them? So he is, and um, by the way, the patron saint of new of the newly dead. Okay. Yeah, because he's all right. He just died in our book. Okay. Okay. So, um, but now knowing that and knowing the definition of rhyme, <laughs> help. Do you have any clue why that's there? I mean, is it why I, it's of the rhyme? Yeah. Why is he sunk Demian of the rhyme? If oh, rhyme no. is frost. Watch, I probably looked up the wrong definition. Anyway. Frost formed on cold objects by rapid freezing of water vapor in cloud or fog. Maybe it's the people. Maybe they're like the cold like object. I don't know. Anyway. So that was a fantastic. That is weird. I know. I don't. I know. Right? Yeah. So I song Demi another rhyme, although we don't know why you're rhyme. Okay, so it's now that time for our viewers to be able to enjoy this, but our listeners will get to learn by listening to our lovely description. Let's take a look at that illustration. <laughs> okay, so this is sad. Um, this sad little picture of yeah. poor, like, Demian just under a whole thing of rocks. And I mean, it's, and then you see the villagers' feet all holding a piece of marble. Um, I bet they feel horrible. No, they don't. Clearly they don't. No. (laughs) And that's a lot of rocks. I mean, you think that if someone was, like, throwing a rock at you, wouldn't you run? Like, I would have just kept on running. But apparently he just stood there and took it. It's like that scene in um, Game of Thrones where the brother is getting shot by a bunch of arrows. And he doesn't swerve. He just keeps (laughs) running straight. (laughs) And everybody, like, everybody watching is like, pivot! Damn it! Like, uh, <laughs> stop running straight. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of that. Move. You should. <laughs> so, Sankt Demian, I, I feel bad because you know he did a lot for these poor people. And hey, makes sense. It's Fjorda. Mm-hmm. But yeah, patron saint of the newly dead. Okay. So, what are what is our moral of the story here? Um, okay. Sometimes you just can't satisfy people. Nope. Yeah, I, I, I think the same thing. Yeah. But you Sem- can't please everyone. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Um, I think we should take away from this that, um, if you can't please angry, crazy, mad people, stop, run away. Stop trying and run away. <laughs> yeah. Stop creating stuff. Cut your losses and run. <laughs> exactly. Get out. I mean, um, another thing is, since this happened in Fjorda, Fjorda, I think, will do anything to kill a person. You know? We'll find any reason. That's true. They do like violence. Yeah. They, they wake up every day and choose violence. And so that brings me to the next thing, the Grisha Order. So he obviously is, like, I think because, of like, the hands that created kind of supposed, we don't really know. He's mm-hmm. praised the saints, but we're thinking that, like, maybe, and also making the aqueduct. I see I'm changing it each time too. That's fine. He's a material guy, right? I would think so. Yeah. So I think that is also another reason that like I bring up the Fjorda thing. Fjorda will do anything to kill Grisha. Yeah. <laughs> because this is a yeah. So Easter eggs. Oh, did you have any else anything else? Mm-hmm. Okay. You e- got it. Okay, well, um, Easter eggs is, this was actually in Ruin and Rising, and I, this book, like, this mountain, supposedly, and they mention it because it's actually the spinning wheel, is his old monastery, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, not not the mountain, the monastery of, 
of Sankt Demian is actually where they they went when they were hiding from the Darkling in the spinning oh. wheel place. Wow. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Done with mine. All right. Uh, we have Sankt Maria of the Rock. Mm. Uh, okay. So in the beginning of the story, they talk about how the Suli are these nomadic people and when there is a place that they are welcome, like the horse races in Karieva. Yes, go girl. They stay sorry. through the fall. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, <sorry. laughs> like you doubted me or something. <laughs> um, they stay through the fall making money <laughs> and doing odd jobs. Uh, but one year, winter came early. <laughs> uh, so it cut down on like the time they would have to make money. Uh, so this local guy offered the men, just the men, um, jobs in the copper mine because clearly only men yeah. can work in a mine. Uh, so the night before they were going to start the job, one of the Suli seers uh, read coffee grounds, not tea leaves, but coffee grounds, and oh. told them not to go into the tunnels. They asked her why. Um, no, 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 they didn't ask her why. They asked her what they could do. What right. do you want to ask why? Like, that bothered me. Um, but they're like, well, what can we do? Um, so... <laughs> She puts on a jackal mask. Yeah. And sits there for like <laughs> hours and hours. Um, <laughs> apparently, that's like what seers do. They put on a jackal mask. And she sat there until the moon set and the fire was burnt out. So I'm guessing by morning time. The jackal mask was working its magic. Yes. And it, so, okay, I'll let you finish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so when she finally takes his mask off, she points to a little girl named Maria and says, she has to go with you. That's horrifying. So nobody <laughs> asks why. Um, they're just like, that's not a great idea. Um, but they did it anyway. <laughs> and she rides on her father's shoulders through the mines. Hmm. Nothing, like literally nothing happens all day long. Everything's fine. Um, I do... They, like, there was one part where I thought it was kind of cool where they talk about, like, the smell. Like, it smells like blood from the earth because it's a copper the mine. Cop, yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, kind of gives you a sense of it where does. you are. Um, but so towards the end of the day, they were like, yay, nothing <laughs> happened. The seer's crazy. Or Mario's with us. So nothing happened. Yeah. Um, but then as they were leaving, of course, the entire thing starts falling in on them and, like, blocks their way out. Uh, little Maria raises her hands up and, like, literally raises the roof. Woo! Girl, <laughs> raise that roof. And the ceiling magically holds. And the walls start shifting, too, and, like, creates a path out of there. So ever since that day, the Suli have always been able to find shelter in the caves that Maria formed in the Sikrzoi. I had to find a reason to say Sikrzoi because it's one of my favorite words in the Grisha verse. Well, girl, I like it. <laughs> and isn't this, like, maybe I'm wrong, but in Rule of Wolves, remember when... We're not there yet. What do you mean? Go ahead. Oh. Were you playing with me? No? no I figured that would be an Easter egg that we should talk about later. About. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. You're jumping so, I am jumping ahead. Uh, so anyway... She is known as the patron saint of those who are far from home. Hmm. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is look at the illustration. Okay. So I'm just going to say right off the bat, her doll looks like her. Yes. It's like a twin her. Yes. It, like even wearing the same like clothing. And she also... Doesn't really look as young as I pictured. She kind of looks like a 14-year-old. 15? She does. Well, I mean, I don't know about 14 or 15, but she does look older than I thought she would look. Yeah. I mean, because when the old woman in the jackal mask just points out at the girls, like, I just... And she's fairly large, like, compared to her father. So, yeah, she definitely... Hey. And they don't say how old she is, but no. she's carrying around a doll, so she can't rag be... A ragdoll. She can't be uh, too old, but... That rag doll is working, though. Look at that. Look at that cute little jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and like, the, the rag doll even has its arm up, too. It looks like it even has little <laughs> boots on. Uh -huh. Ooh, work. Come so, on. So <laughs> we can see um, the little the tunnel and them all with their arms up in the air like, yay. 
And then the guy in the forefront here with his axe. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah, that pick. Yes, their pickaxe. 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 So the women, like, I mean, like, did weren't the women not there? No. I mean, they're not in the cave, no. Okay. But in the end of the story, don't they, like, I feel like they ended up on the, uh, they, they emerged on the other side. No. No, they didn't? Mm-mm. The rock walls of the mine shifted in, like silt in a pan. They shuddered and slid, making an opening so that the Suli might pass. Okay. Through the mountain they went, led by Mario and her fathers, giving the rock with the path before them. They emerged on the other side. Yeah, I see that. And and there at the base of the Sikorzoi, the Suli have always been able to find shelter. Yes. So, where, so it on, says on the other side. So they left all the women on the other side of the mountain. And the seer. And Yeah. Well, hey. Oh. Maybe... Goodbye, it, women and children. It will make for a lovely field trip. <laughs> back to through. Go, <laughs> to go up the mountain and back down. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. And I guess that when she... So, she's raising the roof. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that these... Because I thought it was kind of cool that she says... It's that one line where it's like the silt or something. It's like as she moved... Yeah. Um, I'm guessing, like, it sounded to me that, like, she was creating... Uh, like a bubble of for them, but just them. And when they were moving through, that it wasn't creating a tunnel, but I guess it really was creating a tunnel behind them. She was making all of the rock and silt move. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I will let you do your story. <laughs> um, I got a little excited there. Um. So the moral of the story. Little girls can raise the roof. Always have your jackal mask on hand. That too. You never know when you're going to need it. You don't. Um, don't ever question a seer. Because <laughs> apparently no one does. I don't know if there's like a real good moral of the story. Because it's not like people died or there's a big lesson in there. Well, um, I don't know. In there, the big, I don't think there was a real a, a lesson. Well, you know what? It's the prejudice of the people that didn't take the Suli in. A? I don't know. I'm trying. Well, they only went in the mine because winter came early. <laughs> if and winter comes down. early, you just really <laughs> gotta figure it out. So and um, yeah, hey, rag dolls always have it, and she's got. Oh, well, there you go. She should go on Project Runway because mm-hmm. she. Cre- I'm sure she made that rag doll's outfit. <laughs> you know, Mario, we want you on Project One well, there you Runway. Go. Okay. So the the Grisha the order. order. She's. She's Along in, with all the other saints. There's so many material kais yeah. in the story. We have had some others, but the majority of them have been material kais. Yeah. You know. And, a, yeah, specifically, I guess, a duress. duress. Yeah. Okay. So what's your Easter egg? And the Easter eggs. Um, I did think about, um, it reminded me of in the last book. Rule of Wolves. Wolves with... Um, it's I with the crows. <laughs> yes, I got it, girl. Because I was trying to say it halfway like, through your story. With so. the uh... <laughs> when they went and they had to go get Zoya. The, when they yes went to go get the try to um oh my gosh neither one of us I can speak. Know. Okay, they, like something happened. The metal they yes. went to go get the metal and uh-huh. replace it with so they could have the titanium. And the Suli like talked to um, Zoya, but. It talks about like the prejudice and things like that in here, mm-hmm. and that would be why Zoya didn't want to disclose the fact that she was Suli. But didn't they also go like they the Suli helped them by taking them through caves and got them like that's part of that story. Like, is this well? There you go. Like, is that because it sa- says that they're always they always find shelter in the caves? Yeah, because they came out. Remember, like it, I remember that because it was a really weird like scene in Rule of Wolves because yeah. they came out of the mist. <laughs> Yeah. And they had the jackal mouse clone. And, and Zoya th- goes to a cave when she's a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. But they helped they helped her and yeah, so I think it's the same. Yeah. Another Easter egg, just by the way, is um this is one of the saints that Inej had named one of her knives. Which makes sense. Of course. Yeah. Well, I mean being Suli and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, moving on to the Really odd story. <laughs> um, Sankt em- um, Sankt Emerens, 
And so this is a really weird one. And what's funny is I didn't understand it at first either. And I read this book a long time ago. And I had to ask Chris last night for some help. But let me at least tell you the synopsis of this. Okay, so Funked Emerins. There is a village that I do not know how to say. Correct. Um, it's in Kirch. So we're with our crows, you know, our party animals. Um, and this this little town is known for its, like, great grain and barley and hops. So I, I love saying hops, by hops. the way. I know. I just I don't even like beer. I don't even know <laughs> what it means when a bar has lots of hops and stuff. It's but hoppy. It's so fun to say. So um, anyways, they're known for that. They've got the best barley and, yeah, so they make lots of good stuff. Um, and it's so good that every year they, um, when the leaves begin to turn, the townspeople pretty much bring up these little tables and have a festival. So, and everybody gets, and they have this festival, which they rely pretty much on throughout the entire year to make their money. So you got to make sure you got good barley and stuff. Okay. So the festival's coming. Um, <laughs> and after they have a successful festival, the next day they as good people do, go to church and give thanks to Gezin and their saints. However, one year, the townspeople had gotten a little too happy. I mean, enjoyed their... Hoppy happy? Hoppy, yeah. They enjoyed their festival a little too much, where they had some headaches the next morning, and just, they they were hungover. That's, That's the point of it. So, they didn't go. You know, I mean, it was just a successful celebration but they just didn't go to church however all but one little child and his name is emerins enter the main character of our story it's a weird kid named emerins okay so this kid is apparently the only person in the entire town that like is religious and very religious he's not even like a little bit he's like pious so he's like surrounded by all these people that i just think don't really care that much um, but he he cares a lot. Um, they say to the point that, like, he on, he doesn't cry on Saint's Day, which, by the way, I don't understand why would you cry on Saint's Day. I had no idea. I don't. I tried looking it up, couldn't figure it out. Okay, so, but he doesn't cry on Saint's Day, but he does cry when the people are late to church. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this <laughs> more... odd little child. Okay, yeah, I know. So this morning that they um, have hangovers, Emerins is pissed. He's just like, "Uh uh-uh. So he goes around just wailing and crying and screaming and knocking on doors and getting people to, like, like, trying to get them to come to church, and they all ignore him, like I would. (laughs) I mean, I'm sorry. Okay, so Emerins, um, so this part is, like, it, year a little like a year goes by and they don't know and the they're getting ready for the next you know festival however they have start to have some issues with their growing their barley and everything i think it's the barley right it's got to be yeah um it anyways it starts going bad um and they didn't have like a really good um grain season so they, as the festival starts to get closer and closer, they were kind of like horrified. They put all the barley they could together and didn't really have much, like had just a little bit. So they put it in like, I guess like it fit in four different silos. And the next, they all of a sudden like, they go and look and as they're getting ready for their festival, they notice that one of them happens to be like it doesn't have as much well on further investigation rats have infested it and they're all freaked out because they're like oh my gosh our barley's gonna go bad yeah i guess barley goes bad so they're concerned because they don't want anything else to happen um so what do they do um because they can't poison the rats because that's gonna hurt their barley um however this little emerin's kid says hey i got it how about you just take me tie a rope around my waist, throw me in the silo, and the rats will go away because I am so pious and holy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the 
townspeople, I love them because they're like, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Who wants to go? Yeah, that sounds correct. Let's do it. You know what? It's worth a shot because we got to make money this year. So what do they do? They do it. And it actually works. Like they throw him in like a fish. Like I, I imagine just like him on a fishing line and just like them bobbing up and down and okay. So it works and they celebrate him and little Emrins is so happy and whatever. Um, and then the next day they notice another silo is the same is, has the same situation. So what Emrins pops up and like, Hey, I'll go back in. So he goes back into the next one. Well, so don't forget the festival's going on. And there are people that are watching him, you know, holding on to the other end of the rope while he, I guess, he's doing his work inside there. Well, they hear the festival going on. And they smell the sausages and the jams and all the nice smells and hear people dancing. And they're like, you know what's a good idea is if we just, like, after we put him in once, like, I mean, we can run down real quickly, go grab ourselves the, like, funnel cake and have a dance and get a beer and we'll be good. And then we'll come back up and help him. So they do. <laughs> and one beer ends up being two. And then all of a sudden they're drunk and having just a great time, completely forgot about it. And poor little Emerins is just in that grain and he's, he's pissed and he's pulling on his rope. And nobody's doing anything um, because nobody's there. So he died, floating in the grain, and his mouth and eyes and nose full of barley. (laughs) And the next day, the townspeople slept soundly in their beds because they didn't have a kid to come and, like, distract them. And um, they didn't notice until late afternoon (laughs) that he was even dead um, because they got to sleep in. And then they started to realize, oh, why is Emerin's not coming and being mad at us? We're not going to church. However, Emerin's was buried. They decided to take his body and bury it in the barley field. And since his death, beer or bread made from this lovely little town has forever tasted of misery and leaves anyone who (laughs) consumes it with a sour stomach and melancholy thoughts. So this town... And its bitter fields are long forgotten because I'm guessing nobody wanted to continue eating their bread or drink their beer. But Emrens is the patron saint of brewers and is paid homage in late summer when the harvest begins. All righty. That is the weirdest story. It is very strange. So before we go any further real quickly, you want to know what I didn't understand is that I thought that when they're thro- like I didn't understand how he died. Like, I was like, okay, like, they're getting it. Because I thought that you could be on, t- like, a silo and grain. I didn't know that that you would sink. I just thought, like, why doesn't he just, like, sit there and wait a little bit longer? Um, I mean, they'll be back in the morning. They're just drunk. But I didn't realize that, yeah, you um you can't. <laughs> that's why he's on, like, that's why he's a fishing lure. Yep. They're bobbing him up and down mm-hmm. because, so... <clears throat> Which then makes me question the people that were watching him and thought that, okay, so if we just drop this rope for a minute, he'll be okay? No. I, uh, okay. So anyways, continuing. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at this lovely image. Okay. There is that Emerins. He's on a rope. He is. And he... He just looks annoying. It's that <laughs> hair. Yeah, I don't like him. Um, I don't know. Anybody that, like, you know, puts religion in your face and, like, comes and tells you you're wrong is not a good person in my eyes. I think everybody needs to leave Arab alone. So this little pious boy is really annoying to me. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, I'm not too sad that he died. Thinking actually, Wow. Kind of, sorry, but, you know, his annoying people just drive me crazy. Um, and this kid just really drove me nuts. And maybe it's also the fact that I didn't get it until last night. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm guessing, like, okay, so what do we think the moral of this lovely story is? Um, I have no... Uh... You sure? Really? It doesn't just pop out? <laughs> you just can't think of one, really? <sighs> yeah, I I kind of am stuck, too. I, I put maybe, um, don't 
go into a silo. I um, mean, that's a very important lesson because it, it does actually happen in real life that people yeah, die Chris, from falling into silos. Chris told me. Um, they have tools to get you out, mm-hmm. apparently. I heard him say that. I don't know what kind of tools they use, but... Um, Special silo tools, duh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, people will always chew beer over kids. Yeah. Partying is a lot more fun than holding a rope. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are too pushy with your religion, you'll die. <laughs> hey. Okay. All right. Pushy on anything. Yes. How about that? If you push anything in anybody's face, you're just going to... You're annoying, yes. You're annoying and you're just going to die. Yep. Okay. So I think he is a corporal Kai because he's kind of controlling the rats, I think. Because it doesn't make sense. Like, his holiness has nothing. Like, no. 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 You can't be an annoying kid and be that holy and actually at work. So he's got to have some kind of corporal Kai powers, possibly. Yeah. But he's so annoying, I don't want him to even be a Grisha. <laughs> So, like, he's lucky I gave him that. But wow, you have some strong feelings about this I do this not boy. like emerinds. No, no, I do not. Um, Easter eggs, not a clue. No. no I don't think there's any. No. Um, and I don't think this was brought up, luckily, anywhere in the Grishaverse. Or maybe I've just tuned it out because I don't like this kid so much. <laughs> it makes me sound like a great parent, doesn't it? <laughs> like, I'm, like, sitting here just bashing this, like, but Caden is an emerald. Wow. Anyways. Um, <laughs> There's some strong feelings happening. I know. Okay. Well. All right. Well. We're going to let that story go because I apparently am getting upset. God. Oh. I know. Okay. So. Great story. Yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to another boy. Sankt Vladimir the mm. Foolish. Hmm. So the story takes place in Oscarvo. Mm-hmm. The bay in Oscarvo used to be like this really rough place for ships. Uh, the people tried really hard to make it into a working harbor, but they always failed. It's just like, so, like the the water's really rough. Uh, so one day, the king, for some unknown reason, but <laughs> it is important to the story, um, says that he's going to land a bunch of ships there. How? How do they find out, though? Letters? Um, How do the letters get there if nobody can... I don't think it's an island. Oh, you're right. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And the people were like, Mm. oh, well, what are we going to do? Because, like, now it's, like, their chance to gain favor and maybe change their fortune if the king likes their harbor. It's really (laughs) weird. I don't know. I really... I'm unsure. <laughs> but they need to have a reason. They need the king they to come. They need to have a reason to build up a harbor or we'd have no story. So <laughs> then comes Vladimir. He's this young guy with no talent. I'm sure you would hate him like you hate every other Actually, young no, I boy. I love this one. Um, he's like the village shy outcast who doesn't do well around people. People don't like him. Love him. Um, I really do. I'm sorry. Um, And he's happiest playing in the waves by himself. Um, All right. So he hears all of this troublesome stuff about the harbor. And he thought that he might have an idea on how to fix it. So he wades out into the water. And the deeper he goes into the water, the more the water follows him. Weird. I like how this is described. Like the mm-hmm. tide recedes out to him like a woman gathering her skirts. Like that gives a yeah. good visual. It really does. Um, there's lots of cool visual uh, in the storytelling of these things. Um, even though some things don't make sense, at least there's good visuals. Uh, so everyone's <laughs> like, yay, now is our chance. Quick, build a seawall, build a lighthouse and <laughs> stuff. So for 30 days and 30 nights, this Kid stands out there keeping the water away. What's he eating? What's he drinking? Like, why is... I don't know. Don't worry. The this crabs whole, are nibbling his toes. Yes. The crabs are... He's getting some crabs. But it's like... <laughs> I, I'm very confused as to how he can stand out there for 30 days. But, again, it's a story. So, when they're done, they're yelled out to him, like, Hey, dude. <laughs> you can come in now because we're done building our stuff. 
But he was so tired <laughs> that he just like stops, like puts his arms down and he freaking dies like right there on the spot. And he like rides the waves, like his <laughs> dead body surfs right. the waves into the harbor. <laughs> I love that we're adding this in. It's the he truth. surfs on in. It's the truth. And so when he gets to shore, they put him on this like beer with lilies. And for another 30 days and 30 nights, his body doesn't decompose. It's just like perfectly pristine. But on the 31st day, his body is like see ya and just dissolves into sea foam. Like the little mermaid. And he drifts away. He's gone. So he is known as the patron saint of the drowned and of <laughs> unlikely achievement. No. First, so first we have to look at the illustration. Which, by the way, I love this illustration. Yeah, the illustration is very lovely. And one thing you didn't point out is they did say, besides the fact that he was foolish, that he was also nothing to look at. Like, that he wasn't cute. That's, but that when has you nothing look to do with the actual, like, storyline, though. It doesn't, like... Oh, I know. You're right. But I'm just saying in the picture, I think actually out of all of our like pictures so far, he actually is the cutest. Yes. He does have a nice picture. Um, but I, you can you can see some of Oscarbo back there. You can see the seawall and the lighthouse and stuff. Um, they have some people, some pier things that they uh, put out there. Um, <laughs> the dock. <laughs> 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 and uh, you can see how he's holding back the the water there. Yeah, he sure is holding that water back. Yep. Yep. So that's how he stood for thirty, 30 days. Thirty days. Thirty nights. You know, we're being really like biblical. I feel like thirty days and thirty yeah, nights. Yeah, that's Noah's thing. Right? That's what it was. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then what was I doing? I was saying something that was biblical in my other one. This is like maybe our religious episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Terry and Eric get religious. Wow. Um, yeah, I know. So, what are, the moral of the story? Um, okay. I don't. Don't be foolish. Don't be stupid, I yeah. guess. Like, eat some things sometimes. Um, you know. Don't take advantage of weird kids. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, I mean, this poor town, like, I mean, is really, like, I mean, doesn't do anything for him. And then he does, like, I'm he guessing. He saves the that day. Now they're going to be in the king's favor because he can finally land his ships there. <laughs> yeah, he can land his ships there so they can get all that praise because, I don't know. Sure. However, I mean, I, I just think it's the sea foam. That is literally like the Little Mermaid. She t- like in the real original story, yeah. she turns into sea foam. Right. Yeah. So I think that's interesting. And then isn't there like salt too, which I feel like it's a purifying thing. Maybe. There's like a yeah, because it's a, but a small heap of sea salt among the lilies. Well, alrighty. Yeah. Um. So as far as Grisha order. Uh. Okay. So he's a tide maker. Yeah. yeah. It's our first tide maker. Yeah. Is he our first Ethereal-Kai? I don't think so. I think we had one earlier Adam. on, but he's the first tide maker. We should have started a tally. Well, it wouldn't be that difficult to go back. No, it wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> N- next time. We'll have next a tally. on the Creasha cast. Um, well, yeah, but yes, clearly a tide maker. There's nothing else he could be. Um, Easter eggs. Um, Oscarbo is a town we read about. Yes. Um, we knew about the lighthouse, and we just and. The dock, we just didn't know how it was it made. Was, it was a nice little history of Oscarvo. Is um is that in Shadow and Bone at all the show? I don't Is it? I don't know. I know. I'm not I, sure. I shouldn't ask these questions that we aren't prepared no. to answer. Mm-mm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not that good on the spot. Yes, no. we are. We're great. Um okay. but I do like this story a lot better than Emran's. You like everything better than Emeryn's. I do. You have like a personal vendetta. And I feel bad because, I mean, the time, this poor Vladimir, like, I mean, so if he could control water being a true tide maker, couldn't he have controlled it going back in? I know he was tired, but I mean. He didn't have proper training, okay? Okay. So. He just was doing what he knew how to do. He had an idea and he went for it. <laughs> and look what it, look what just happened. let him do his thing and starve for 
30 days, days and 30 nights. Yeah. You know what I'm realizing? These Grisha are people that, one, are definitely not appreciated for their talents and pretty much give their lives for people that don't like them. Really mean people. Oh, yeah. And that's, but that's like what saints are. Saints are like martyrs and they typically are like, you know, they, they die for what they believe in. But they, in our world, the saints are typically Grisha, and we don't know that until, like, later on, but. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. well those are our stories. They sure are. Did you enjoy story time? Yeah, and that's all, um, I think another, it's another Nez knife, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's like, got a lot of knives. She does. I was going to think about. Many I was knives. trying to think about how many knives she had, and I couldn't remember. Many. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. But don't worry, we'll figure out which <laughs> saints they are. And you know, I've only taken like one sip of my tea because well, I keep on forgetting okay. it's here. Well, you take a sip of that tea. And it is that. not. No, it's not. <laughs> um, we um, we don't have any Grish cast news. Mm-mm. So not we, a. N- sorry, there's nothing happening out there. So um, we're just gonna leave Alex out in the field, but Alex will come back to See us. See Alex. Yep, Alex will say hi. Alex is good. So, um, okay. Well, I think we are good. So our next week, we're going to keep doing four. I think that's the best way to sure. keep doing. Yeah. So next week, we'll be doing the Saints Gregory, Valentin, Peter, and Urian. Urian. <laughs> yep. And those are pages, if you're following in the book, pages 57 through 69. And, um, yeah. Word. Yeah, so... That was fun. It was fun. Okay. Well, okay. Well, you guys be good, and we'll see you all next time. Long live the Grishaverse. Like, we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. It was. No No mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok for real at GrishaCast. Thank you to our amazing staff, Chris, Alex, Sid, Michelle, and Chloe.